Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Introduction to Paninian Grammar. We are studying the features of the meta language of Paninian Grammar and we noted three features namely meaning of the word who is head and who is subordinate. In the object language it is the meaning meaning which is the head and the word form is the subordinate. The second feature was the meaning of the cases, fifth, sixth and seventh. In the object language, the fifth case is translated with the help of the word from. In the meta language, however, the same fifth case in addition to this meaning in the object language also means immediately after. And this meaning is in correspondence with the first difference that is a word form as a meaning is the head. The sixth case in the object language stands for or is translated with the help of the word of. In the meta language sixth case is translated using the word instead of or in place of. The seventh case in the object language is translated with the help of the word in or on in the meta language. The seventh case in addition to these is also translated as immediately before. The third important feature of the meta language was forming the pratyahara, the technique of pratyahara. This is a technical term used by Panini which in a concise manner refers to a huge set of sounds which are part of a grammatical operation be it an environment left hand side or right hand side or the major grammatical operation namely the substitution. It could be a substituent or it could be the substitute. After studying these important features we started to study in detail the technical term it and we will continue studying it further in this lecture. So markers in the meta language of Paninian grammar that is the broad theme we are looking at and today we shall deal with consonant markers. In the previous lecture we saw how vowels are termed as markers by which sutra and we then also looked at the examples. Today we shall study the sutras in the Paninis Ashtadhyayi, the Paninian grammar which talk about consonant markers. So the, in all there are these sutras which talk about the technical term it, the technical term it is defined in this set of sutras. Now we shall study these sutras. It is these sutras which primarily define the consonant marker. We have already seen 1, 3, 2 which defines the vowel marker Upadeshe, Ach, Anunasika, It. Today we shall focus on the consonant markers and on the first sutras. Let us study the first sutra which defines a mar marker, a consonant marker and that sutra is Halantyam. We have studied this sutra before in brief when we studied the technique of forming the Pratyahara in which we said that the final consonant of all the 14 sutras is termed as it and then using that we form the pratyahara ach, hal, al etc. We have studied this in detail before. 
Let us look at the sutra in detail now. So this is halantyam in which there are two words hal and antyam. Both of them are in the first case 1 slash 1. Hal stands for a consonant and we have seen how hal means a consonant, how hal stands for a consonant. Hal is a pratyahara formed with l marker at the end of the 14th sutra and h coming at the beginning of the 5th sutra. And so from that h up to l all the sounds in between they are part of hal. Of course omitting the markers in between and also the vowels that are produced for distinct comprehension of the consonants. So hal stands for a consonant. Antya stands for final. Antya means final. So the words continued from previous sutra are two words upadeshe as well as it and the meanings of these two words are same as they were in 1, 3, 2. So finally the meaning of this sutra can be said to be this upadeshe antyam hal it saudnyam syat that is the meaning in Sanskrit. So in English we can say that in the initial enunciation that is the upadesha a consonant at the end is termed it that seems to be the meaning of this sutra. To study this further we can say that we have seen how the final consonants are termed it in the initial 14 sutras this we have seen which help form the other technical terms called pratyahar like ach, hal, al, ik, yan, etc. Apart from forming the technical terms called pratyahara, there are some more purposes, some other purposes of the consonants being termed it. So let us look at some of them, but before that we can also enlist where all the consonants at the end in the Upadesha are termed as it, some details. For example, it consonant at the end of a nominal root, a consonant can occur at the end of a nominal root which can be termed as it. A consonant can come at the end of a verbal root and it can also be termed it. Similarly, at the end of a pratyaya, you can find a consonant which can be termed as it. Similarly, an augment, agama, can also have consonants at the end and that consonant can also be termed as it. So, pratipadika, dhatu, pratyaya and agama, they all constitute what is known as upadesha. And a consonant that appears at the end of all these can be termed as it by 133. Let us look at the examples of each one of them. The first is the consonant coming at the end of a nominal root or a pratipadika. Let us take the example devat, devat meaning God. Similarly, nadat meaning a big river. So as you notice, t at the end appears in both these words and we apply 133 and this t becomes it. This t is termed as it. So now these nominal roots deva and nada, they will be called tit, having t as it. That means one who has consonant t as an it, as a marker. What is the purpose of this t over here? What does it trigger? So now it triggers 4115 which will add a feminine suffix e in the sense of feminine to this word deva and nada by using tit as a trigger. So this 4115 tit dhanai and so on. So tit is the first word here and this triggers the feminine suffix e to be added to these words. So we have deva plus e, deva means a god. E is a feminine. So now we get the word Devi and the meaning is goddess. Nada plus E 
and then you get the word nadi which means a river. This is how marker t at the end of a nominal root triggers these operations to derive the other existing words in the object language. Let us look at the consonants coming at the end of a verbal root and what do they function for. So, consonant at the end of a verbal root or dhatu, for example, shing swapne to sleep or kung shabde to make sound. At the end of both these verbal roots, shing and kung, we notice that ng comes at the end. This ng appears at the end of these verbal roots and by applying 133, ng will be called it. Therefore, both these roots verbal roots will be called nit, ng, it, those who have ng, it, that is nit, both of them are nit, one who has consonant ng as an it. Now, this ng, it or nit feature will trigger the operation stated by 1312 which adds atmanevada suffixes to these verbal roots by using nit as a trigger. Anudatta Nita Atmane Padam. And so from root she we will get the words shete by adding the Atmane Pada suffixes. Similarly, Kung will get the word kavate by adding the Atmane Pada suffixes. Now let us look at how a consonant coming at the end of a pratyaya is termed as it and how does it function? What does it bring about? So, take for example, yat, yat as a suffix, we have already seen this, acho yat, yat is stated in the sense of karma and bhava, similarly tavyat, stated in the sense of karma and bhava. So, at the end of these two suffixes, yat and tavyat, we find t, consonant and by applying 133, will be termed it and therefore these two suffixes will be called tit having t as it one who has consonant t as an it. So after this 61185 applies which marks the final vowel of these ya and tavya as a swarita accent by using tit as a trigger. So, if we add y to the verbal root chi and we have seen this example, we will get the word form, final word form che y, in which this y will be marked as svarita by 61185 and this is triggered by this the marker which comes at the end. Similarly, if you add tavyat after chi, you will get the final word chetavya which will be marked swarita on the final vowel like this, this vertical bar on top is the sign for a swarita accent and we shall study what swarita accent is later on when we study the process of speech production. Right now we can say that this vertical bar on top of a letter is the sign of a swarita accent and here it is swarita primarily because 61185 functions over here because both these pratyayas, both these suffixes are having t as the marker, as the it, t coming at the end. Now let us look at the consonant coming at the end of an augment. So we have two examples, at and art. And we notice that t appears at the end of both these augments. Now by applying 133, t will be called an it. So, these augments will be called tit, having t as it, having t as a marker. Now, 1146 will add these two elements at the beginning of a verbal root by using tit as a trigger. So, tit will be used and 1146 will say that an element which is tit is added before. 
So you get the form abhavat where a is added to the verbal root bhu at the beginning, before. Similarly, a will be added to the verbal root asa before it because it is tith following 1146. So now we have seen how the consonants coming at the end they are termed as it and we have seen examples where consonants coming at the end of a verbal root, a nominal root, a suffix and an augment is termed as it and that leads to various grammatical functions because the marker triggers the respective operations stated in the grammatical rules. That was about 1.3.3. We have studied it in detail now. Now let us proceed further and look at the next rule which says something about the consonants at the end being termed as markers and this is in fact a negation. Let us look at the rule. Na vibhaktau tasmaha 1.3.4 Na vibhaktau tasmaha Here there are three words in the sutra Na, vibhaktau and tasmaha Na means not Vibhaktau is 7 slash 1 of vibhakti and tasmaha is 1 slash 3 of tasma Vibhaktau here means in the vibhakti This is the object language meaning which is used here Tusmaha is 1 slash 3 of Tusma. What is Tusma? Tusma is a word made up of three components. The first one is Tu, second is S and the third one is Ma. So what is Tu? Tu is defined in 1169 to mean five consonants of the class. Namely the fourth row. The, th, the, dh, and n in the traditional inventory, sound inventory. This is what is tu, and sa and ma we know. So the words that are continued from the previous sutra are these two, hal and antyam from 133. So now the meaning of this sutra is in the vibhakti, ta, th, the, dh, n. Sa and ma at the end are not termed as it. So, this is the negation. By the previous sutra 133, all these sounds coming at the end of an upadesha, they would be termed as it. But now, this sutra, in a limited domain of vibhakti, which is also part of the upadesha, states that these 5 plus 2, 7, these 7 sounds. They are not to be termed as it in a vibhakti. Otherwise, you can, but not in the vibhakti. So, what is a vibhakti? That is the next question. So, the term vibhakti is defined by 14104. Sup and thing, according to 14104, sup and thing are termed vibhakti. What is sup? Sup is a set of 21 suffixes added after a nominal root that is by 4.1.2 and thing is a set of 18 suffixes added after a verbal root by 3478 and both these suffixes when added to these respective roots make it a pada, a word, finished word form to be used in a sentence, eligible for using in a sentence. So, sup and thing, they are called vibhaktis. There is one more section in the Ashtadhyayi 5312.27, the suffixes stated in this section, they are also termed as vibhakti and here are some examples, tral, da, danim and thal. So now, l, coming at the end of uh, the suffix tral, da, danim, ma and thal, le again coming at the end. Now in these cases, we note that these suffixes are termed as vibhaktis, 
So m coming at the end over here would otherwise have term have been termed as it by 1, 3, 2, but now this is vibhakti. So m coming at the end is not termed as it. Whereas this l coming at the end over here in both these suffixes, this is not part of 1, 3, 4 and therefore even though this is a vibhakti, l can still be termed as it and these two suffixes will be termed as lit and then a following and then the function namely accent a particular kind of accent that will be triggered by this l by this lit suffix. But most importantly m will not be termed as it that is the meaning of 1, 3, 4. Let us take a close look at soup and thing and see where the consonants coming at the end are not termed as it. So here are the 21 soups for you, s, o, us, etc. And so you see s comes at the end, s comes at the end here, here, m comes at the end here, once again m comes at the end in these three, s comes at the end here, m comes here, s comes at the end in 6, 2, 7, 2 and in 5, 1, 6, 1, s comes at the end. So these are the vibhaktis and we note that s and m are the two consonants which appear at the end of these 21 suffixes, many of these 21 suffixes and they are not to be termed as it. However, in the same 21 suffixes there is one instance where p comes at the end. P can be called as it that is not mentioned in 134. So p can be called as it. So these are the 21 sups and this is the position, this is how 134 is applied in these 21 suffixes and m and s are not termed as it. As we shall see, they are also part of the actual OL, object language. So here are the forms and you see Ramaha, Rama, Ramaha, etc. In these 21 forms, m is directly visible in this and these other forms. N is all directly visible over here. M is also visible in 6.3. T is visible over here, 5.1. And then Ramaihi, Ramebhya, Ramebhya, Ramayoho, Ramayoho. S is also visible over here. S is converted to a visarga at the end. Similarly, Ramaha. In all these cases, now we have N, M, T, S, four consonants mentioned in 134. These are all Subantas, at the end of which Sub comes. Therefore, these are Subantas. These are the word forms eligible to be used in a sentence. At the end of them, obviously, 134 applies and the consonants namely m, t, n, s, they are not termed as it. These forms are, these consonants are visible in the final forms produced in the object language. Whereas in 7.3, the form is Rameshu, where there is no p. p was there earlier in the meta language and p is termed as it and is deleted. So is not part of the object language. So p is an it, but the rest is not it. So we can sum this discussion up by saying that following sounds are not termed as it. T in 5 slash 1 at the end of 5 slash 1, N at the end of 2 slash 3, S at the end of 1 slash 1, 1 slash 3, 2 slash 3, 3 slash 3, 4 slash 3, 5 slash 1 and 3, 6 slash 1 and 2 and 7 slash 2 and m at the end of 2 slash 1, 3, 4 and 5 slash 2 and 6 slash 3. So in these cases, these four sounds are not termed as it and p coming at the end of the seventh case, 7 slash 3 is indeed termed as it by application of 133. 
So, here is a set of thing suffixes, 18 suffixes. They are divided into two groups. That is why this group is named as 3P, third person, and this is named, named as 3PI, 2PI, and 1PI. Just two different sets, each of nine suffixes, tip, thus, g, etc. If you look at these suffixes, there is per coming in these three suffixes at the end and definitely this is marked as it. But sir coming over here and also here and here and m again coming over here, here because it is coming at the end of a vibhakti is not marked, not termed as it. M coming at the end over here is termed as it. So, these are the tinganta forms and you see the, the markers, the its have disappeared in these three forms, nayati, nayasi, nayami, there is no per. But sa is present over here, once again converted into the visarga, the two dots, nayataha, nayataha, nayavaha and nayamaha, sa is converted into a visarga. And then say, where is the final consonant s is uh, converted into something else and nayete, nayete, nayadve. So, m and m over here once again gets substituted by another substitute. So, the point is these are the tingantas, the padas which are eligible to be used in a sentence because at their final position is a thing. And within this thing, p gets the term as it, whereas s and m, they are not termed as it. Let us summarize. So, we saw that s coming at the end of third person dual, second person dual, first person dual and plural, second person Atmanipada singular is not termed as it. m coming at the end of third person Atmanipada dual second person Atmanipada dual is not termed as it and per coming at the end of third person, second person and first person singular and ng coming at the end of first person Atmanipada plural is indeed termed as it. To summarize, we looked at 1.3.3 and 1.3.4 which state which consonants at the end of the verbal elements in the initial enunciation are termed it. 133 is a general statement that states the it to all the consonants at the end of the verbal elements, be it a nominal root or a verbal root or a suffix or an augment. 134 is a negation and in a sense restricts the scope of application of this term to a subset within the set of consonants in the limited domain of vibhakti once again. So, we note that both 1.3.3 and 1.3.4 are to be construed together and we have seen how it is to be construed with the concrete examples. This process is also known as ekavakyata. This ekavakyata tells us that in the initial enunciation any consonant at the end that is in the final position of a verbal element except tatha dadana sa ma at the end of the vibhakti are termed as it. This is the bottom line. This is the ekavakyata of 1.3.3 and 1.3.4. The questions that arise in this discussion are the technical term it is stated to which other consonants at other positions other than the final. Are they stated, are they termed it at the beginning of the verbal elements? And also, are there any clusters, vowel plus consonant clusters, which are termed as it? And we shall study this fact, these questions and their answers in the coming lectures. Let us now end today's lecture as is our practice with the Mangala Charana taken from a 
commentary text called Prasad, Prakriya Prasad on the celebrated text called Prakriya Kaumudi. This is a big verse, I will read it for you. Shrimad Vithala Mekam Avyayamajam Shabdatmakam Brahmayaha Svichato Jagadudbhavasthitilaye Hetusva Maya Gunaihi Yachwasa Shruti Santati Pavarutis Tampundari Kashrame Bhakta Nugraha Hetu Tasthitamaham Vande Mude Samvide. I'll read it again. Shri Mad Vithala Meka Mavyayamajam Shabdat Makam Brahmayaha Svechato Jagadud Bhavasthitilaye Hetus Vamaya Gunaihi Yachwasa Shruti Santati Bevarutis Tampundari Kashrame Bhakta Nugraha Hetu Tasthitamaham Vande Mude Sampide. And finally, five sutras of today taken from 2.4. The first sutra is Dvigureka Vachanam, then Dvandvascha Praniturya Senanganam, Anuvade Charananam, Advaryuk Kraturana Pumsakam, Adhyayanato Aviprakrashtakhyanam. I repeat, Dvigureka Vachanam, Dvandvascha Praniturya Senanganam, Anuvade Charananam, Advaryuk Kraturana Pumsakam, Adhyayanato Aviprakrashtakhyanam. Thank you for your attention.